Uh, kia ora. welcome aboard Koru Wilderness Images Half Day Photography Tour of Whakarelpo, Littleton Harbour. My name is Alan, I'll be your host for this trip, so settle back and enjoy the ride. Uh, we begin our tour by departing Christchurch City to the southeast uh, via the Littleton Tunnel Approach Road, uh, where we will transit the tunnel through into the harbour town of Littleton, where we begin our tour proper. Uh, for those that are interested, the Littleton Tunnel was opened in 1964 for the then princely sum of £3 million. At the time of its construction, right up until 2017, when it was overtaken by Auckland's Waterview Tunnel, the Littleton Tunnel was the longest road tunnel in New Zealand. The tunnel is shaped like an arch, and above the suspended ceiling that you can see above us, the remainder of the arch is filled with intake and exhaust ducts for both fresh air and for vehicle exhaust fumes. Now as we exit the tunnel, you'll see the harbour itself ahead of us and off to our right. And the township of Littleton will be up on the hills above us and to our left. Now when the first immigrants arrived aboard the sailing ship Charlotte Jane in 1850, the view of course would have been much different. And of course in those days there was no tunnel for the immigrants and they had to make their way over the now famous bridle path. As we make our way up the hill here, if you ever look out to our right, you can see the Littleton Harbour. Uh, we're just going to pull in here to the Sumner Road Littleton Harbour lookout. Fantastic views in both directions of the harbour, and you'll be able to get some fantastic photos. Okay folks, so if we've got everyone back on board, we're going to head along now to our next stop, the Littleton Time Ball. Operating from 1876 to 1934, um, the Littleton Time Ball was built in the manner of a Scottish castle, and one of only a few working examples in the world of a time ball that was used by mariners to help keep the time when they were leaving harbour. Uh, unfortunately, the building was all but destroyed in the Canterbury earthquakes of 2010 and 2011, but the time ball part of the tower itself has been rebuilt and restored uh, and is indeed functional to this day. Okay folks, we're going to move along now, um, hope we've got everyone back on board and that you enjoyed that quick stop. We're going to make our way back through the township of Littleton now uh, and carry on up towards the head of the harbour and do a big long U-turn round the other side and come back down to investigate some more bays on the other side. Uh, I'm going to uh, be quiet for a little while now, let you enjoy the scenery, but uh, we'll pop up every now and then with some interesting commentary and tidbits uh, as our tour progresses. Now for those that are wondering about the geology, both Littleton Harbour and its sister harbour on the southern side of Banks Peninsula, the harbour of Akaroa, are extinct volcanic craters that are now open to the sea. So all of the hills that we're driving around at the moment are uh, volcanic remnants.
Now, you're probably wondering, what about the people? Well, as far as human inhabitation goes, the Maori people have lived in the Wakaraupo Littleton Harbour area for around 700 years, um, with the first Europeans not arriving until around 1770 with Captain James Cook. Subsequently, the Canterbury Association was formed in 1848 with the intent of creating a Church of England colony in New Zealand, led by the association's founder, George William Littleton. Yes, as you probably guessed, the harbour was eventually named after him and formalised in 1858, after several other naming attempts had fallen flat in the process. Governor's Bay, which we're just passing through now as we turn into the head of the harbour, is home to a number of um, heritage buildings, uh, not least is the Ohinatahi Historic Homestead and the St Cuthbert's Church in, uh, in Governor's Bay Road. Uh, both of these buildings are Category 1, and there's also uh, the original 1868 Governor's Bay School and Schoolhouse, which are both Category 2 um, heritage structures, significant because there are very few remaining school buildings from provincial government times in New Zealand. It's worth noting as we approach the head of the harbour uh, that one Joseph Thomas, as the agent of the Canterbury Association and who was in charge of preparing the settlement for the settlers, wanted to place the settlement's capital, uh, Christchurch, at the head of the harbour where we are now at present day Teddington. Uh, but a lot of land reclamation was required and the capital was estimated to be just too expensive. Once we get past Teddington and round the southern side of the harbour, uh, we make our way through Charteris Bay. Now Charteris Bay is notable for Orton Bradley Park, uh, which was a quarry that was used to produce decorative sandstone used on a lot of the early Christchurch buildings. Now the community is spread out over quite a distance, and they also have a very popular sailing club advertised as Home of the Optimist. Uh, which is a reference to the Optimus sailing dinghy which was sailed for the first time in New Zealand uh, from the Charteris Bay Yacht Club.
exciting as we transit into and through Diamond Harbour that the area was named by a chap called Mark Stoddart who bought about 200 acres of land in the area in 1856. Now, the name is applied not only to Diamond Harbour itself, but to nearby settlements of Church, Charteris and Purau Bay. Uh, administratively, that whole area is part of the city of Christchurch. And uh, a ferry connects Diamond Harbour to Littleton on the other side of uh, Littleton Harbour proper. And in combination with buses to and from Littleton and Christchurch City, and this allows residents of Diamond Harbour to commute to the city for work. And there's also a number of, or well, there was a number of historic buildings in the area. Uh, one of those, up until 2012, Godley House, which was built in 1880, uh, was critically damaged in the earthquakes and had unfortunately to be demolished. Fortunately though, one of the other buildings in the area, Stoddard Cottage, uh, which was built for Mr. Mark Stoddard's wedding in 1862, is the oldest building still standing in the area and is registered uh, as a Category 1 historic building as of 1990. And now just another couple of corners and we'll drop down into Purau Bay. Uh, which is a great natural anchorage for a lot of boaties, being reasonably well protected by the hills uh, from all but the worst of the weather. Now, Purau itself has a long history of Maori settlement, with Ngāti Mamoe living here prior to Naitahu settling the bay, and as a result, there are many Maori historical sites in the area. As far as Europeans go, uh, European occupation started around 1843, when a couple of brothers uh, started a farm here, although they later sold that. Uh, to uh, another family. Now as we leave Purau Bay behind, um, you may have noticed that the road has become rather narrower. Now this continues on like this for about another kilometre or two uh, before becoming a gravel road. And indeed the last few kilometres the road is perched high up on the hillside above uh, Littleton Harbour with a quite a long steep drop off uh, down to the harbour below. But the views are fantastic, albeit the road a little bit rough. Um, settle back and let's enjoy the last few kilometres uh, before we get to Camp Bay, uh, which is our turnaround point for this trip, um, being as far as the public road goes. And one last final descent down the hill here as we drop into Camp Bay. Uh, there's a great little parking area just down here off to our left. And we're going to pull up down the end and um, pop out of the car. We'll wander down to the beach itself uh, along the foreshore. And uh, I'm sure we can get some great photos of the, uh, the local area. Well, I hope we've got everyone back on board. Um, hope you all enjoyed that wee stop. 
Now we're just going to make our way back up the hill here and uh, head back into Littleton Harbour proper, uh, back up through Teddington up onto the hilltop uh, via Gibby's Pass and uh, back along the summit road towards Christchurch. Just going to pull over here for a moment and let this gentleman pass coming the other way. Uh, the road as you noticed is rather narrow and there's not a lot of passing places along here. Um, needless to say I will probably be in trouble when I get home because of the state of the car. Um, my wife cleaned it yesterday. I'm pretty sure by the time I get home from this trip it won't be very clean at all. But uh, in the meantime we're going to enjoy the drive and enjoy the scenery. And speaking of which, quick stop just up here and we'll have a look out uh, from the harbour out towards the open sea. And another couple of corners and we've got a great lookout point for looking up the harbour at Teddington. And if you look over on the right hand side of the photo in the distance on the waterline, um, you can just make out the township and port of Littleton itself. Uh, just up the road here we're going to pass over or pass through a narrow gateway uh, with what looks like a metal grill on the road. Uh, that's called a cattle grate which is to try and stop um, livestock from uh, getting off farmland onto the uh, more public areas of the road. And as we go up over the uh, port hills later and back along the summit road we'll actually come across a few more of those. And uh, what we're going to do right now though, we're going to pull over in Purao here in just a minute, coming back into sight down on our right hand side. And uh, we're going to uh, enjoy some photos of the beach and uh, a few photos of some of the boats that are um, anchored up in the bay. didn't think we had time to do so uh, but it looks like we've got a little bit of extra time up our sleeves uh, so we're going to pop into Diamond Harbour just uh, for a few minutes and wander down to the jetty that the um, Harbour Ferry uses some great views across the harbour I think you'll enjoy it Okay, folks, well, I hope we've got everybody back on board. I'm um, going to continue our trip now. 
I do apologise if the views from uh, the Diamond Harbour jetty area uh, were not quite up to scratch, but um, sometimes you've just got to make do with what you can get. Uh, we're going to carry on now back through into Teddington where we turn left and head up onto Gibby's Pass. Uh, our next stop proper uh, will be once we're back up on the Summit Road. So just uh, kick back, relax and enjoy the drive. And again, as always, we'll pop up every now and then with some interesting commentary. Now you've heard me mentioning the name um, Whakarauka Littleton Harbour, which is actually a hyphenated um, dual name between European and Maori. The Maori originally referred to the harbour as Te Whakarauko, which translate as Harbour of the Raupo Reed, which were used by the Maori for some of their clothing and artefacts at the time. Um, of course, in 1858, as mentioned earlier, the harbour was renamed Littleton by the European settlers. Um, but along with the Naitahu Treaty of Waitangi claim settlement in 1998, um, the harbour was given the dual name of Whakaraupo and uh, Littleton Harbour in recognition of uh, the claims to the area. Okay folks, in just a few moments we're going to turn left onto Gibby's Pass Road. Uh, which was first built in 1857, although nothing more than a bullet track at the time, uh, and it certainly didn't go all the way over the hill. But in the end, in 1864, the government decided to uh, fork out nearly £200 for road improvements, the majority of which was made by local prison labour. Okay folks, we're about to turn right just up here onto the Summit Road. Uh, you will note that the road narrows considerably. Uh, the Summit Road is not used as much as it used to be, um, partly for the reason that the Summit Road now only runs as far as uh, Dyers Pass. And you can't actually get all the way through to Evans Pass at Sumner anymore due to uh, earthquake damage and land subsidence from the Canterbury earthquakes. So uh, Dyers Pass that we're heading to now and a fairly narrow road but still a spectacular drive nonetheless and a couple of stops along the way uh, for some more photos. Just ahead of us on the skyline, the rock that you can see sticking up there is known as Cooper's Knob or Omawete. Uh, at 573 metres high, this is the highest point on the Christchurch Port Hills. Now we're just going to duck across the top of the Port Hills here, um, over the summit and pass along the other side. And we're going to pull in at a great lookout spot uh, at an area known as Gibraltar Rock.
All right, folks, moving along again. Um, once again, I hope we've got everyone. Uh, we're going to carry along the summit road now towards uh, Dyer's Pass. Uh, another one or two stops along the way, and uh, that'll just about see us back in Christchurch. snapping um, I hope you'll manage to enjoy that we stop now for those of you that are hoping for clear open views of the harbour I do apologize um, it's not always like that most of the time it's considerably better um, having said that personally I think a bit of cloud rolling in sometimes uh, adds to the ambience adds to the ambience of the area so we're going to make our way along the summer road a little bit further um, avoiding cyclists while we're at it excuse me folks come through uh, Port Hills are quite popular with cyclists uh, it can sometimes be a bit of a uh, bit of an interesting session getting past them, particularly on the narrower parts of the road. Uh, we'll, we'll just uh, enjoy the drive again, and one more stop to make along the way, which we'll touch base with you about as we get a bit closer. In the meantime, enjoy the drive. Just coming into sight around the next corner straight ahead of us is an area known as the Sugarloaf or Tehura o Kahukura, a landmark part of Christchurch City. It houses a 121 metre high television transmission mast uh, which broadcasts across to most of Canterbury and the Littleton Harbour uh, and General Banks Peninsula area. That tower is, sits on a 5 metre deep concrete base uh, which in turn of course sits on top of basalt volcanic rock. And uh, coming up just around the corner, our last stop at Sign of the Kiwi. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I reckon I've earned an ice cream. Uh, come on inside, have an ice cream, and grab some more photos. Once again, I hope we've got everyone on board. Hope you enjoyed that. 
and uh, time to head uh, down the hill now, Dyer's Pass, and uh, back into uh, back into Christchurch City and uh, the end of our tour. Hey, I just want to say thank you all very, very much for joining us. Um, hope you enjoyed the trip, and uh, let's sit back and uh, we'll make our way down the hill here. Well folks, um, as we make our way down to the bottom of Dyer's Pass here and back into Crossfit City, that's uh, pretty much the end of our tour. Um, hope you really enjoyed it, got something out of it, and um, we loved having you aboard, and look forward to seeing you again soon on uh, another one of our photography tours. Mm -hmm.